everyone, I am Daniela, and I am the creative director at FAR Center for Contemporary Arts. We are here today for our FAR community creators with Christopher Warren Elam. He is an old friend and a mosaic artist here in Bloomington. He is also the curator for the show that you see all around us. Uh, it's called Beginner's Mind. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Daniela. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. I'd like to have you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in okay. mosaics. Okay. Um, so I got my start in mosaics um, sort of through the back door of doing um, construction work. I was working for a company in Illinois um, that did all kinds of things, but they also did a lot of tile work. And so I eventually became the main tile setter on this company. Uh, and it was kind of through doing that, I went to a green building convention in Chicago, um, this has been years ago now, but I met a woman who did architectural installations in Mosaic and had a portfolio sitting out on the table and it was one of those old binders. And I was flipping through her portfolio and just, um, it was kind of like a life changing moment mm -hmm. for me where I realized that tile setting could go in this totally uh, new direction. Um, and it was really through sort of discovering Mosaic that way that I started looking for a place to study more and uh, discovered a school in Chicago, the Chicago Mosaic School, where I started attending in like 2008. So that's kind of like what I mark as the beginning point of doing Mosaic. Tell us about the Beginner's Mind show and what your inspiration for it was. Yeah, so... Uh, the Beginner's Mind exhibition uh, was kind of a slow brew. Um, it, I kind of marked the beginning of it as like just being a father and observing my son Felix uh, creating uh, from actually quite a young age and getting to watch him through his developmental um, stages and admiring kind of the, the ease and um, the joy and the sort of playfulness in which he creates, which I think all kids do. Yeah. Um, and as someone who's an artist, I of course um, was kind of watching his process and in some ways like admiring um, the ease and the immediacy of the way that children create and sort of wishing for that for myself. Um, so the idea sort of began then. Uh, I started doing some reading um, one of my favorite artists is Mark Rothko, and I was reading about uh, his, his life, and early on in his life, he was actually a, a, a children's art educator, mm. and there was sort of a group of artists at that time that he associated with that really thought children, uh, the kids' art, were, were kind of showing us these sort of like universal primal forms of expression. Uh, that were maybe the purest uh, kinds of expression. Uh, there's two of the works that are pretty special. Um, one of the works is actually my son Felix's favorite, and he would so he did not want to sell that piece. <laughs> it's um, it's the terracotta piece on the wall called "Send the Sloth." Yeah. Um, it's just a really lovely uh, line drawing. It's pretty erratic in the way that Felix drew it which in mosaic is kind of challenging yeah. um, to accomplish. And so a lot, of, a lot of his pictures, I, of course, not everything that he has made, I'm like, oh, it has to be a translation. But there have been a number of works that I've, I've seen of his and I've just thought, oh, in mosaic, this would be really fantastic. And yeah. so I felt kind of an impulse to do it. My, probably my personal favorite is his portrait. Yeah. Um, which is of a picture that I think the Far Gallery yeah, that uh, did with self-portraits. And it's just so, um, it's so expressive. And that there's something really special, I think, about portraits. Yeah. Um, so doing that was, uh, I just felt like, and he also did a portrait of me, a painting of me. And so anyway, I, I do sort of like get a little bit gravitated towards the portraits. Yeah. <laughs> Talk us through, it could be any project, but your general process of how you start a project. Yeah, so um, 
typically starting a new project, um, someone would reach out to me, usually by email, um, and there are just a lot of details to work through in um, approaching a mosaic project, especially if it's arch uh, architectural in nature. Um, so definitely like uh, visiting the space, um, getting a sense of the dimension of the project, um, landing on a concept. I usually draw multiple mock-ups, um, usually to scale, um, and then get some kind of approval from the client. Um, and then we, we usually have to talk materials and color. And I imagine generally it's like a very slow process. Yeah, yeah. Contemporary mosaic uh, is particularly slow, so um, a good project. The size of the centerpiece on the wall is sometimes takes me about a month to decorate. Yeah. Um, tile mosaic is a, uh, can be a little faster, um, and tile, tile mosaic is also uh, the, kind of the difference is contemporary mosaic. You're working mostly with hand tools. And it's like ancient method of uh, cutting material, usually stone and glass. Right. And then tile mosaics are a lot of, there's a fair amount of machines involved, also hand tools, but um, so really they're related mediums in the sense that you're creating pictures of broken, with broken pieces, but they're kind of totally different um, mediums in another sense. One of the things I uh, often think about with regard to my, my own medium is the thing that drew me to the medium is also the thing I struggle with. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I enjoy a lot of alone time and yeah. I work slowly in general. Um, I'm kind of slow and methodical in the way that I do things. So it fit me really well. I think that's the way I latched onto it rather than being a photographer or a painter, something that I can sit with right. for a long period and really think about something. Yeah. Um, but it's also, uh, it's a lot of hours in the studio and can be lonesome sometimes. And I find myself um, envying like musicians who, <laughs> or like photographers, you know, or, like you click, <laughs> you click a button on an instrument and you've captured a picture that mm -hmm. nobody has captured before. Like the immediacy of that right. is something I, I be for sure. So I have been actually exploring kind of new and different ways to be more spontaneous in mosaic yeah. and um, and more communal. Um, I have some ideas about some more like communal ways of working in mosaic. Are hopefully some remedies to this. Chris, now that we've gotten to know you a little bit better and we know about your work, um, how can the community support you as an artist? How can they check out your work? Yeah, so I do have a web page. Um, it's uh, omosaico.com. It's omosaico.com. I usually have to spell it out because it's <laughs> not an unusual word. Um, so you can find my portfolio there and be able to reach, reach out to me in that way. Um, otherwise, I think uh, just supporting artists in the terms of, um, yeah, buying, buying local art. Yeah. Um, you also teach some workshops. I do, yes. Um, I've been teaching with Ivy Tech for several years now um, and offer like an intro to mosaic course to them, contemporary mosaic course, and a glass on glass class. Mm. And so those are usually six week workshops. Um, so you definitely could uh, sign up for one of those. That'd be mm. great. Right. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing with us. Um, yeah. And stay tuned for the next Community Creators. Thanks so much.